About a week ago, I downloaded a stock trading app called Robinhood, and I knew absolutely nothing about the stock market. And today, I can watch a video like this. And then I saw when it hit the resistance at it ended up opening at 130, and then I saw when it hit the resistance at 140. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. It built a new resistance at 165 and a new support at 160. It looks like it broke that support. And I actually understand it. In this video, I'm going to run you through what I did to learn the stock market in a week and uh, hopefully save you some headache and show you some shortcuts. All right, first up, Robinhood. It is the first trading app that is free. For the past 20 years or so, Anytime you wanted to trade stocks, you either had to pay a broker or download a software that would allow you to trade, but they always charge a transaction fee per trade. And those transaction fees would be anything from five to $20, which means um, unless you know what you're doing and you plan on holding a stock for a year plus, you're immediately in the red and you can't really do anything. But that changed with Robinhood. About a month ago, my friend told me about it and I decided to take a look at it last week. Upon messing around with it and buying my first AMD stock, uh, we'll come back to AMD in a minute, I told myself, you know what, I'm going to actually take this seriously because anybody I know that's really good with stocks is really rich. So I'm actually going to invest some time and try to educate myself on all how all this works. So. This video is not going to be a tutorial, it's not going to be a how-to or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you a bunch of things and give you a bunch of words that you need to research and learn. And if you do it the way I did it, within a week you should know how the stock market works and how to trade and how to do it effectively. And if you're one of my older viewers or somebody who watches my videos because of you know making stuff, uh, my, this YouTube channel is not going to turn into a stock market YouTube channel. Uh, this I treat this channel as more of like a portfolio and showing my work. And for those of you who are watching my videos for the first time, I'm actually a manufacturing engineer and I design stuff professionally for a living. I take people's ideas and turn them into mass production. So if you're interested in stuff like that or like how things are made, uh, check out some of my other videos. First thing, there's a website called Investopedia. It's a Wikipedia for investing. If you hear any word or anything that you don't understand or don't know in this video or in any videos that I recommend, pause the video and either search it on Investopedia or Google or YouTube, take the time to understand what the word is, and then come back and unpause the video. This is what I did for the first couple days, and yes, it's very tedious and very time consuming and kind of boring, but it's the quickest way to learn. And that's, that's pretty much how I did all what I'm about to show you. But I'm going to save you a bunch of time so you don't have to sit through all the uh, scattered information on the internet. The first thing you need to know about the stock market is there's two ways to invest. There is analytical investing and there is fundamental investing. They're two totally different things. Don't mix up strategies with one or the other because they can spill disaster for you. Fundamental trade is like Warren Buffett, uh, JP Morgan, you know, old school trading where you research a company, you dig down through their uh, quarterly reports, you know everything about them, you know what they're selling, you know what their products are, you know what their bottom line is, you know what their income is, you know what their competitors are, and you know all the information about the competitors too. That's the uh, old school way of investing, and it still works, and it's still uh, very important. I recommend, uh, whether you wanna be a day trader or a long-term trader, that you learn the fundamentals of trading. Some things that you should Google and learn, income statements, balance sheets, and cash flow statements, also uh, 10Qs and 10Ks. All of those things are very, very important for uh, fundamental. Now, analytical investing is a more modern approach of investing, and that's the one that you're probably most familiar with where uh, some guy sitting in front of like 20 screens with all kinds of data running through it. Uh, that's analytical investing. And it's not nearly as complicated as it seems. Now, the way analytical trading goes is there's a few different types. Uh, two main ones that you'll see is day trading and swing trading. They're essentially the same as far as uh, principles and philosophy, but day, uh, day trading is what it sounds like. You buy a stock and you sell a stock in the same days, so usually within minutes. It's very quick trading and you can make a lot of money if you can do it effectively. Swing trading is where you buy a stock and you sell it the next day or a few days later or a week. It's a uh, very short term trading. But before we get into any more of that, I need to explain to you how the stock market works and what makes it go now if you've ever looked at a stock market chart it's probably looked something like this <clears throat> now what analytical traders do is they try to figure out if the stocks going up or down and if you can do that you can make a lot of money and the way they do that is looking for what's called supports and resistant lines stock market the stock market moves up and down no matter what and it rarely ever stays straight and 
these oscillations can be predicted if you know what to look for. It's basically, it's just looking for patterns. That's all it really is. And the most fundamental way they do it is they look at the peaks and the valleys. And by doing so, they can predict where the stock market is going to be in the future. The simplest way is just going off the last two peaks of what they have. So if this is the top line, this would be considered the line of resistance. And this would be called the support line. Now, what day traders and swing traders do is they watch the stock and they graph out where these lines are. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. This is the bait most simplest way. In the next video, I'm gonna show you all the different kinds of ways you can do it and my particular setup that I'll be using to uh, test out. So what these guys do is they watch the stock and as it's moving up and down, if it crosses the resistance line or the support line, it's called a breakout. This right here is where it would be considered a breakout. Now day traders and swing traders buy stock right here at this point and they will ride the way, the uh, line up and recalculate where the new resistance and support lines are and that's how they make their money. That's the basics of analytical trading. Now while this seems very simple, it can it's not, it's very complicated and it takes a lot of experience in understanding what you're doing. The reason the stock market goes up and down is because really big investors come in and they buy a lot of stock. Now they can do this for a bunch of different reasons. It can be like the, uh, the 10Qs or the 10Ks, the quarterly reports. Uh, maybe they did a bunch of research on the company or the company is about to come out with something. There's a million reasons why uh, someone, a big investor might buy into a stock. Well, day traders and swing traders pick this up using scanners. They can see when these stocks are about to jump up. A good analogy would be um, big investors are like freight liners or cruise ships, you know, massive ships moving a lot of stuff, moving, they're making really big wakes in the water. Day traders and swing traders are more like speedboats and jet skis. They uh, come in, they jump up and down on the waves, they have fun, uh, but then they are pr gone pretty quickly and they don't go very far. Except that the waters are also infested with sharks and filled with rocks and if you fall off you'll probably die. <coughs> so, day traders can see when these stocks are about to go up. They have what's called scanners that will pick up these stocks that are about to fluctuate really high. If they pick them up at time and analyze the data, they will buy into the stocks right as it breaks the resistance line. And when that happens, the stock usually skyrockets and the day traders and the swing traders will ride these waves up and then sell out at the top and make profit. That's how they make money. Now, if you're wanting to day trade, there's two things you really need to understand. That's volume and float. Now, volume is the total amount of shares being sold in a given day or a given moment. Float is really important to know because it allows you to understand how much risk and reward you're going to get when you take a trade. Float is the total number of stocks out in the market that you can buy as a trader. Now it's different from the total uh, share cap of a company. It's not the same. There'll be people in the company that own shares, but they usually don't trade them a whole lot and that's not calculated in the float. So it is different. The, the reason float is so important is because the less amount of shares there are in the market, the more volatile that stock will be, the more it will jump up in price or jump down in price. So for example, if there's 10 million shares floating in the market, and if all of a sudden the volume of the stock goes up to say 500,000 or a million, that's 10% of the total stocks. You know, that, that stock is gonna be moving a lot. Versus say uh, a company like Apple, who I think has over a billion shares out in the market right now. So you know, if there's a million shares being moved in a given day, that's that's less than one percent of their uh, total stock. So that price, that stock price, is going you know, to barely fluctuate, and you're, it's going to be a major risk for not a lot of reward. So what day traders and uh, swing traders look for are stocks with low float and a lot of volume being moved. So if you want to get into day trading and swing trading, um, some things you should research and understand is, uh, well, let's start with the scanners. There's two types of scanning. Um, there's pre-market scanning, uh, which can be done a bunch of different ways. You can use a dedicated software to do it, which all of those cost money, or the way I'm going to be doing it starting out, because I don't have a lot of money, is using TD Ameritrade software called Thinkorswim. Um, it's free to use, but you have to put in, I think, 50 bucks and start a brokerage account with them. Um, but it is a scanning and analysis platform, and I'll be showing you my setup. And another thing you can look up is gap scanning, which is uh, now analyzing the uh, difference in trade between the stock market closing yesterday and the stock market opening today. 
the other one is called momentum scanning uh, or also momentum trading. That's what I just explained about the stock market going up and down and the resistance lines and all that. Now, analytical traders uh, look for patterns and here is a list of all kinds of different pattern types. I suggest you research them, understand what they are and how they work. Uh, now, I'm gonna show you uh, Thinkorswim. Brief, I'm just gonna brief over the software and show you how it works and what it does. Uh, if you don't understand anything I, that I've said or I'm about to show, uh, don't worry, just stop the video and research it and then come back and continue. Okay, so this is Thinkorswim, and this is probably what you're familiar with when you see somebody talking about the stock market. And I know it looks super confusing right now. It's not, trust me. Now I'm just gonna brief over all this stuff, and in the next video I'll go into more depth because this video is already pretty long. So this right here is my analysis for how much a stock is gonna be going up and down. It, uh, <clears throat> this is where I calculate support and resistance lines and where I should buy and trade stocks. This chart over here is a little different. It's, it actually shows the momentum and the volatility of the stock, so whether it's gonna be jumping up the price or not. This is my kind of quick look. This is what I'm gonna be using for uh, finding stocks quickly and just seeing if they have potential. And if they do, then I look at this chart to analyze where I should buy and sell. But uh, let me clear all this out and I will uh, just start with the very basics. So this is not nearly as confusing. Get rid of that and then uh, clear studies. So when you start your Think and Swim account, this is what you'll have when you start. And we've got a bunch of different tabs up here. You have charts, market watch, scans, analyze, trading, monitoring. Uh, starting out, all you really need to know is scanning and charts, but all the other stuff is also important and you should learn down the road. So some things to know on this, uh, this chart is one, the if you wanna add studies and analysis like I was showing you, you go here and hit edit study and you can, there's all kinds of different types of uh, analysis that you can do. I can add Ichimoku, which is a fantastic analysis. Uh, I highly recommend that you take the time to learn it. It's complicated and it's kind of confusing at first, but if you understand it and you can figure it out, it's very, very useful. It's uh, one of the best analysis I've seen so far in you know, my research. You can uh, also just click here and this will take you right to the studies that you currently have. I'm gonna take it off. Okay, so this, what we're looking at here is candlesticks and volume measurement. Like I said earlier, volume is something you want in a stock. Now the white is the after hours trading. This is after 4 p.m. the last day and 9.30 a.m., uh, which is when the stock market opens the next day. And the only transactions that usually happen at this time are, uh, you know, big purchases like big investors or hedge funds or something like that, or just electronic things going on. Uh, it's a real low volume time. It's not really when you want to invest, especially as a uh, novice starting out. Most of the big investments and the money you're going to make is within the first two hours of the stock market opening. That's when all the fluctuations happen. And then by, you know, 11 o'clock, usually the market kind of evens out. Now candlesticks tell you where a stock opens and closes. So down here is where it opened at, right here is where it's closed at. When it's green, when it's red, it's the opposite. This is where it opened at and this is where it closed at, so it dropped. Now the little sticks that are coming out of it, that is the uh, highest that it was sold at and the lowest that it was sold at. So the stock could open here some people could buy stuff up to here, but then a bunch of people sell it and it drops down here, but then it comes back up and it closes there. And those are called wicks. Uh, real quick, some things you know about the uh, chart. You could go here, you can select what's, what time frame you wanna see in the uh, on your chart. So this is, uh, I've got mine custom set to two days, one minute. And then you, know, you can see every trade one minute apart, or you can do five minutes, five days. It's five days apart. The whites are the uh, opens and closes. You can see up in the top left corner, as I move back and forth, you can see the time period and stuff. And it'll also tell you open, open high, low, close, stuff like that. <laughs> now, when a stock is uh, just kind of going back and forth like this, this is called consolidating. It, this market doesn't really know where it's going. There's no trades or sales. There's low volume, nothing's happening. Um, that's not when you want to buy stocks. However, as you see, as it hits here, it starts to go up and it gets a trend. And this is during closing hours and then there's some big movement but uh, throughout the rest of the day there's not really much going on and if you actually you can start to draw trend lines just from this very simple trend line uh, so you would match it at the top of the open and then the top the max sale here and then we'll just drag this out past here so that's a basic trend line and then you do your uh, support line right about here 
Now, over here, you will see watch lists, and you can customize these, and you can follow stocks that you want to sh follow. Um, now, the way you find stocks is you can go here to scans and type in the parameters that you want. Um, like I said, day traders like to look for vol uh, stocks with really high volume and really low float. And you can't search for float, but you can, uh, I'll show you a few ways to check that. Now, so this is a really basic search. It's uh, stocks between 30 cents and $5. The reason you wanna go for low dollar stocks is usually there's more volatility in them and you'll be making more money. But as someone starting who only has $1,000 like me, you know, if a stock is $1.50, you're not gonna even be able to buy a thousand shares. Uh, so you're not gonna be able to make a lot of profit, which is kind of the hardest part about starting is you're not gonna be making a lot of profit and you're still risking about the same. Like I said earlier, Robinhood is a free trading app. So what I'm gonna do is use Thinkorswim as an analysis tool and trade on Robinhood. But there's something called the PDT rule or the pattern day trader rule. And this is a government thing where if your account is flagged as a day trader and you have less than $25,000 in your account, your account will be locked for 90 days. And the stipulation is you can only make three day trades every five days. So three day trades a week. What counts as a day trade? If you buy a stock and sell a stock in the same day, that's a day trade. Now you can swing trade, but you're also risking a little more. And if you have not a lot of money starting out, it's yeah. So if we go here, I don't think it's going to work right now if I hit scan because, uh, yeah, the stock market's closed. It's Sunday night. Nothing's going on. Now, when you do a scan, you can actually load these scans in your watch list. So if the uh, stock market was live right now and I could, I could go down to personal bullish bears nightly scan, I picked this up off of... Uh, uh, stock market community YouTube I can't remember but I'll have links in the description below for the videos and stuff but uh, yeah you can select this and if there was if the scan was actually bringing up anything you could see it in the uh, watch list right here now back to charts let me uh, get rid of these when a stock is going up in price this is called bullish it is rising you'll hear this a lot bullish and bears uh, when it's going up, it's bullish. When it's going down, it's bear, as in bear, and there's nothing going on. If we go up to like 180 days, you can see like it's the same thing. No matter whether you're looking at one day or 180 days, the stock is always fluctuating. It's always oscillating no matter what. And if you pick up these oscillations and you learn them and you figure out how to uh, replace your money, you can make money from this. So that's the uh, the basics of analyzing and scanning data. It's, it's really... This, the basics of it's pretty simple, but getting good at it is where it takes practice and just knowledge and experience. And I highly recommend you don't just jump into stock markets and try to do this after watching a couple videos. What you want to do is start a paper account, which is trading fake money. You can practice. And one of the nice things about Robinhood, again, is it's free and so there's no transaction fee. Which means if you want to, you can just buy one stock and see what happens uh, for like a dollar a share and you're not going to be losing anything. Just remember the pattern day trader rule and don't do more than three a week. Um, now, one thing to note, the difference between a paper account and a real account, when you place orders, they are trans they go instantly in paper accounts because it's just fake. It's simulation. In real life, if you buy too much stock and there's not enough volume there, your sales won't go through or you'll lose a bunch of money because you're trying to sell something but nobody's buying them and the price could tank and then you're stuck with shitty stock. So keep that in mind. That's a really important thing that uh, a novice needs to know is paper money is instant. Real money is not. You really have to pay attention to volume. And one last thing I'll show you is uh, Finviz. This is a pretty nice uh, website for also finding and scanning if you want to. Um, you can go to you can go to screeners and then get rid of the pop-up. Go to all. You can do uh, performance plus or minus, whichever way you want to go. Let's do uh, the past week up. So any stock that has been going up in price for the past week, price under five dollars because we don't have a lot of money we want to keep it low relative volume uh let's do current volume and these are all the different stocks and then you can go to uh, snapshot and this is a year-long progression of the stock and you, you can see you got your support lines going here and one thing that is nice about finviz is when you you find a stock on here you can click it right here is the shares floating so this is how many shares are in the market so 
if you see a high volume, a million volume in a stock and there's 85,000 like this, that's, you're not going to make a lot of profit on 85,000. Uh, 1,000 is uh, less, it's like 0.8% of the total stock. So the price is going to go up like a cent or two and you're going to be risking a lot of money for no profit. You want to look for stocks around 10,000 float. And lastly, some YouTube channels to follow. Stock market community. I think this is a few guys that upload videos on one channel, but uh, they're very detailed in the uh, nuances of trading. They, uh, they go into real good detail in their videos. A great playlist on their channel is Omar Momentum Trading. I'll have a link in the description below. Pretty much all of my analysis and scanning uh, was learned on that YouTube channel. Another one's Warrior Trading. Um, this guy is really expensive, but he's been doing it for six or seven years. He's got courses on his website and he makes a lot of money. Like he's really good at what he does, but I think the courses start at like $4,000. Um, if you're somebody who's really strapped for cash like me, I'm only going to be starting with $1,000. Uh, it's probably not the guy for you, but he does have a lot of great videos on there regardless, but he doesn't go into the nuances as much. And he also has a best-selling book, uh, How to Day Trade, which I think has four and a half stars on Amazon and like 380 uh, reviews. It's uh, He actually had a webinar just last Friday as I was learning and uh, I was able to pick it up free through there, so that was pretty awesome. Another one is Rick Gutierrez. He's another day trader. He doesn't go into the details and stuff as much, but he does videos almost every day and he covers really basic, uh, you know, entry level stuff. So if you're brand new to it and you don't know anything, highly recommend his YouTube channel. And the last one is Eat Sleep Profit. He, this YouTube channel doesn't have a whole lot of videos, but um, they are really well edited and he's very concise and gets to the point when he actually uh, makes a video. And lastly, uh, websites that you can use. Finviz, which I already mentioned, uh, which is a graphic analyzer, and I'll go into detail on how you can use that to scan for stocks. Seek Alpha, which is, I haven't used it a whole lot, but it's a very popular website. Uh, it does graphs and stuff. You can use it for analysis and stuff like that. And then Stock Tweets. This is actually a live stream of t uh, tweets that are about the stock market, and it's and I really recommend that you have some kind of news feed going on. Also, all of the YouTube channels that I talked about also have chat rooms and stuff that they use where a bunch of people, like thousands of people are in and they talk about which stocks are getting hot and stuff in the day. Um, you should really look into joining one of them and finding one that fits you. And lastly, Yahoo Finance, which is really good for doing uh, the same analysis as like FinBiz or stuff, but it also is, shows the balance sheets and income reports and cash flow statements. So if you want to research fundamental investment and kind of compare and contrast companies, it's really good for that. That's what I uh, actually first started using when I was researching fundamental trading. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you the details and nuances of uh, scanning and how to analyze data.